Ooh, I'm super excited to share this with you folks. Can you do me a favor though? Just, just stop for a second and take a look at this drawing for me. Do you see that delicious detail that's in that drawing right there? Ooh. So, how did I do it? Well, I didn't use a pen and paper. Nope. I didn't use a PC. Nope. And I didn't use a Wacom tablet either. So what did I use? Oh, maybe an iPad Pro? What? Using the Apple Pencil. That's right. This level of detail in a drawing is now possible through the use of an app called Adobe Draw. And together, I'm going to show you how you can turn out that level of delicious detail in any drawing you wanna make. Stick around, this is gonna be good. And we're back with another episode of JR Design Sessions. What's up everybody? I'm Jonathan Rose. You can find me here on my YouTube channel or on Instagram at Jonathan LT1. A few months ago, I had a conversation with my buddy Matt Martin. And I said, hey, I found this new app for digital inking that could really uh, take things to another level using the iPad Pro and of course an Apple Pencil. Would you want to give me another drawing to do that we can showcase here on my channel? And he says, yeah, sure, let's do it. So the drawing that he gave me uh, is actually this drawing, you can kind of see it, uh, of Snowman. And that's the drawing that we are going to be working with today. So, step one. The first thing you need to do is go to adobe.com and sign up for a membership ID. Now, don't worry, you don't have to pay for a subscription or anything like that, but you do need um, an Adobe membership ID to be able to download the app and start working away. Step two, what you need to do is get your media, the drawing that you want to be working with, uh, you need to get that onto your iPad somehow. So you can either scan it, take a picture of it, however you wanna get it there, but you gotta get it to your iPad so you can work with it there. So, having said all that, without further ado, let's get into this. Let's start inking right now. Okay, we are here on my iPad screen. I'm going to pull up Adobe Draw. Now this is the, direct, the introductory page that you will be met with. This is the Behance gallery of other users that have submitted artwork. And on the bottom, you'll see the three tabs here. To your right is your settings tab. In the middle is the gallery. And then on the left is your work. This is where we wanna be. We wanna create a new project. So on the lower right hand corner, I'm gonna tap the, the plus sign and I'm gonna choose iPad Pro Landscape. And that'll work just fine for what we're doing here. Off to your right, you can see you've got your layers panel. There's a draw layer and a background layer. And you can actually hide the invisibility on those as well. And up at the top on the right hand side, you've got a full screen option that will hide away your tools and layer panel. And you can actually change some settings here. And there's a next step tab or a share tab, whichever you'd like to call it. And then to the left of that is your layers um, hideaway. And you can actually reveal that or hide it away anytime you're drawing. So <clears throat> what we want to do is actually get Matt's drawing onto our artboard here so we can actually start inking on it. So above the layers panel, there's a plus sign. I'm going to tap that and we want to put mass drawing in here, so, and that is an image. So we're gonna say image layer from my iPad, and I'll choose his drawing, and it places it on the artboard in transform mode. So you, you're ready to actually pull these handles out and transform it to the size of your screen or however big you might want it. And once you get it there, you can just tap done. And as you can see, we're just about ready now, the only thing that I, I would like to do is reorder the layers so that my drawing layer is actually on top of Matt's artwork. So I'm just going to tap the image layer and hold and drag it beneath the drawing layer. 
and I'm going to activate the drawing layer and then hide those out of my way. Off to the left here, you'll see you've got a series of tools. Each of these behave a little bit differently. I would encourage you to experiment with those. But the top one is my favorite. It's just the fine tip pen that seems to work just fine. And if you tap on each of them, you get another series of options. You have a size. You can change the thickness of your stroke, bring it down or up. I'm going to put mine at about two. That'll be just fine. The next one down is your opacity slider. At 100%, you can actually back it off if you want to, to have some transparency in what you're laying down. I like to work at about 100% in terms of inking. Um, down below that is your color. Now there's a picker here that you can choose from. You can also choose from your themes that you might have saved or from colors that are in your library in the Creative Cloud. So now there's also a slider on the bottom of this that will control the shade of your color that you've chosen. And for this, I'm going to choose 100% black. The very last one, and probably the most important, is the where the sliders are. Now, I don't typically mess with a lot of these except for one, and that's the taper. Now, if I move this to the right, you'll see how the brush behavior up top sort of changes. That's what you want. You want that to be more like you're actually inking with a brush or something that's going to be able to determine or interpret the heaviness in your strokes or um, the lightness in your strokes. So I'm going to leave that at about 80% and call that good. Now, we're going to come in here. I think I'm just going to start with his eyes here real quick. It's the most, I would say, striking part of the image. Now I'm drawing this in, in real time and trying to talk to you while I'm, I'm doing it, which sometimes is not always easy. Let me zoom in a little bit closer. And you can kind of see as I go along, it's, it behaves really well with what strokes and how hard you're pushing down or how light you might be pushing down in regards to your inks. Now, one of the things that I really like about this too, that's a bit of a time saver, is you see this area here that I would ordinarily have to go in and color. I don't actually have to do that. As long as the area that you want to do that with is closed, you can just tap and hold on that area and it will fill it in for you. It's kind of a nice little time saver. I'm just going to put a little more finishing on this side. I'm going to come back on the other side. We'll start working on this eye. As you can see, it's it's very responsive and accurate to what you're trying to lay down. And again, to fill that area, tap and hold. As you can see, just in a short time, a lot of detail can get put down. Now one of the things that I like to do is actually remove ink as I'm going along. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So I've got a pretty decent start on his eyes. I'm going to go back to my tool panel on the left here. On the very bottom, there's a transparent tool. That is actually your eraser. So if you tap that, you can change the size, just like we did for the fine, the fine pen. I'm going to bring this down to about 2 to where we were. And same with this. I'm going to change the taper on the eraser also. I'm going to put it at about 80-81%, which is where we were. Now I'm going to come back in here and try and add some details around his eyes that might be sort of reflective of light, maybe 
highlights in his eyes. And you can kind of see, that's kind of a cool way that you, you would not be able to do that with traditional inking on, on paper, for sure. But it gives you a little more freedom. And you can be a little more creative with it in how you see fit. So that's starting to shape up pretty well. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hop over to the drawing that I had done. And this one is actually still in progress, but for the most part, it is getting very close. But as you can see, there's quite a lot of detail in there that came together pretty well. And it's very accurate. It's very tight. Um, if you zoom in here to some of my line work, I mean, that's that's pretty tight. And, and I'm at, you know, 455%. So if I back out, it really it really caters to those who would who really appreciate fine details and i am one of those people so um so let's say for instance this is your project you you you're done you you're calling it good how do i get it to photoshop or how do i get it to illustrator say i want to put some more effects into it add a filter add some color maybe well up at that that share type up at the top all you have to do is tap that, and at the top, you can see it says Open in Adobe Desktop Apps. And if you tap that, you're left with Illustrator and Photoshop. So depending on which route or which app you would like to, to further edit your artwork in would be the appropriate one. So for me, I wanted to show you this because this is actually, I wanted this to actually be a vector artwork piece that I can continue to work with and scale up and and do anything that I wanted to do. So I'm going to put this into Illustrator and I'll be able to show you how you can look at it in terms of actual vector art and looking at paths. So let's do that right now. Okay, as you can see now, we are in Adobe Illustrator. And if I zoom in here, you can get a closer look at how this is shaping up. You can actually see if I direct select the each of these. These are all paths now inside of Illustrator. All refillable, modifiable, 100% scale friendly. Wouldn't lose resolution or anything. So that is pretty cool, right? I'm gonna zoom out here. And that. If you look over to the, the layer panel on the right-hand side, you can actually see that Matt's drawing came along with the inking art that I had, had sent over. So it your project will come across in its entirety for you to do whatever you want with here inside of Illustrator. So that was cool, right? Hey, if you guys want to see more from Matt Martin, he is actually on DeviantArt. I will put a link to his gallery in the uh, description below. Check him out there, give him some love. Maybe, you never know, maybe you and I, you and I can convince him to show up on an episode of DR Design Sessions. If you would like to see that happen, comment below and let us know. Um, this has been DR Design Sessions. I'm Jonathan Rose. Hit that bell, subscribe if you aren't already. Like this video, show me some love, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.